Hello, bonjour, servus, vitaiu. Welcome to the eighth tutorial of statistical mechanics, algorithms, and computations from the physics department of Ecole Normale Supérieure. This week, we started our discussion of classical spin models, and in particular of the easy model, one of the handful of models in physics that really count. As discussed in the lecture, this model describes spins on a lattice with a rudimentary nearest neighbor interaction. The energy between two neighboring sides is equal to minus one if they are aligned, and it is equal to plus one if they are of opposite sign. The energy of the system is the sum of the pair energies, and the statistical rate of a configuration is given by the Boltzmann factor exponential of minus beta e. The easing model is one of the places where many different fields of physics meet. It is here that our original understanding of phase transition was acquired, and it was an early meeting place for the basic simulation methods as the Metropolis algorithm, that we discussed in the lecture, or the closely related heat bath algorithm, later on also for the cluster simulation methods. Each time a great new idea comes up, it is first tried out in the easing model. This is the story that Michael and Alberto will develop in the heat bath algorithm, and these developments have led to the perfect sampling approach first presented by Prop and Wilson in 1996. So let us now discuss an alternative to the Metropolis Monte Carlo method, the heat bath algorithm. Rather than flipping a spin at a random site, we now thermalize it with respect to its local environment. As Werner discussed in the context of a priori probabilities in this week's lecture, the detailed balance condition that accompanied us since week one can be written more generally as is shown here, where A of A to B corresponds to the a priori choice of proposing a move from A to B, which together with the acceptance probability P accept of A to B gives the probability to move from A to B. In this general detailed balance condition, the metropolis strategy corresponds to the symmetric choice a of a to b equals a of b to a, so that these a priori probabilities drop out of the picture, and this is exactly the reason why we never spoke about them until this week. In contrast, in the general detailed balance condition for the heat bath algorithm, we have a of a to b proportional to pi of b, so that it is now the acceptance probabilities that drop out of the picture. So now, in the heat bath algorithm, how do we actually thermalize a subsystem that is a spin at temperature t? For this, we simply pull the spin out of the system and measure the field h at the now empty position. In this example, h equals to 2. If we would return the spin in the state plus 1, it would have the energy e equals to minus h. If instead we would return the spin in the state minus 1, we would have the energy E equals to h. This leads to the normalized probabilities pi plus and pi minus. So if a random number epsilon between 0 and 1 is smaller than the probability pi plus, we return the spin in the state plus 1. If on the other hand the number epsilon is larger than pi plus, we return the spin in the state minus one. In Python, this gives the very short program heat bath easing.py. In this program, we keep track of and update the energy E so that we can easily obtain the specific heat CV of the system as a function of temperature. And we see its characteristic peak, which indicates the ferromagnetic-paramagnetic phase transition 
which takes place at a temperature Tc, which we know exactly. But note, however, that in order to study this phase transition in very large systems, it is actually better to use the cluster algorithm that has been presented by Werner in this week's lecture. So now, let us look at the configurations generated by this algorithm. Here, we have the randomly sampled initial condition. And then here, we sample one after the other, the sites we want to update, as well as the new values sigma k. You see, we update the spins here and here and here and here. In a beautiful illustration of what constitutes a Markov chain. Here we arrive at the final states and you can see that the program has run so long that it is really well thermalized. Now let us run the algorithm again with a new initial configuration which is clearly different from the first one. Again we randomly sample the sites k and new spins sigma k and again the system is brought to equilibrium. But hold on, we run the simulation two times with clearly different initial conditions. So what a coincidence that we ended up with the same final configurations. Let us run the algorithm a third time with a third initial condition. Again, we end up with the same final configuration. And we could continue this even more often. So we have a random Monte Carlo algorithm, but we suspect, and Alberto will soon prove this, that all configuration merge towards the same final configuration. This is because although we used different initial configurations, we have used the same sequence of sites to update, as well as the same sequence of random numbers to make our updates. Something very strange is happening here. The heat bus algorithm implements a true Markov chain that does approach equilibrium. But using the random seed, you can be sure that any other configuration will after some time lead to the same sequence of configurations. So we can continue our two simulations here to see that they really stay the same for all times. This simply means that the state of our Markov chain depends on the sequence of sites k of t and random numbers y of t, but not on the initial configuration. So let us now rewind our two simulations to see that initially they have really been different, but that they have merged at a given moment shown here. So we understand that Markov chains couple they forget their initial configurations, they forget where they are coming from. As we discussed in tutorial 1, this forgetting takes place on a time scale given by the correlation time. Mathematicians speak of mixing time. And it follows that the coupling time must be larger than the correlation time. Coupling of Markov chains has first been formulated by the mathematician Wolfgang Döblin in the 1930s and it was really an ingenious observation. Alberto, in a few moments, will show you how we can really prove that all the 2 to the nth initial configurations couple, even if n equals 100 or 1000 or a million. This will lead to the perfect sampling idea. But before listening to him, Please take a moment to download, run and modify the program heatbathising.py and understand the influence of our innocent little line with random seed. Mikhail has made us observe that the heat bath algorithm produces identical output for the Ising model even if we start from different initial configurations. Let us formalize his observation in terms of an algorithm, HeatBath using randommap.py. This algorithm has no starting configuration, but has a seed, 
which produce the deterministic sequence of the sites k for the spin update and of the random number upsilon for the thermalization of the heat bath algorithm. This program is really a random map, an alternative way of viewing Markov chain algorithm. Michael just observed that after a long simulation time, the output of a random map is independent on the input, which means on the initial configuration, but it depends on the seed and on the random numbers triggered by heat. This property is called coupling. The coupling, the property that all the two power n possible initial configuration of the Ising model finally merge together after a given number of iterations called the coupling time, it seems too good to be true. And even if it was true, how can we check it? For example, for a system of 100 times 100 spins, how can we check that all the 2 power 10,000 configuration finally merge at a given time? And this time wouldn't be too large? So, to understand how coupling works, let's run again the program HitBat using randommap.py. Starting from two configurations, the all-up configuration on the right and the random initial configuration on the left. As it was already observed by Michael, the two copies just merged and couple after a while. Just remember that at each time step, we have updated the same spin and used the same random number upsilon for both copies. Starting from these two configurations, we immediately scroll to the last stage of the simulation where the coupling occurs. We observe that the configuration that started as a all up has a few sides where the spin is up, while in the left configuration the spin is down. This is never the other way around. It never happens that the spin is up on the left and down on the right. This is a remarkable property and it holds also at the very initial stage of the simulation and actually it works at all time. Let us suppose, like here, that the right configuration is larger than the left configuration at a given time t. This means that it can never happen that the spin is down on the right and up on the left. Let us now analyze what happens at time t plus 1. We see that the field h at all sides on the right is always larger or equal to the field h on the left. Let's go back to the program easing.py. We see that the function p plus h is an increasing function of h. This means that if we update up the spin on the left, we also update up the spin on the right. The order at time t is conserved at time t plus 1. This means that the left configuration remains smaller than the right configuration at all time up to the time of the coupling. Let's play the same game with the all down configurations. On the left you have the all down configuration and on the right some random starting initial condition. Once again, you see that the configurations on the left are smaller than the configurations on the right until the coupling time. The same reasoning leads to the same conclusions. And we can also conclude that the all-up configuration is always larger than the all-down configuration until the coupling time. 
the relation which is preserved by the heat bath algorithm is called half order. The all up configuration is larger than any other configuration. The all down configuration is smaller than any other configuration. But two configurations, they do not necessarily have a relationship between them. So now let us run a large system. On the left, the all down configuration. On the right, the all up configuration. Let's evolve them and see where they differ. After a while, they converge, they merge to the same coupled configuration, together with an astronomical number of possible initial configurations, like a galaxy-sized flock of sheep herded in by two shepherd dogs. The unique configuration you see here is the configuration at which the two power n initial configurations couple. It is clearly independent on the initial configuration. However, it is not really drawn from the Boltzmann distribution. This is because the coupling occurs at a configuration which interpolates between the all up and all down configuration. The coupling time is a stochastic variable. It depends on the seed and on the choice of k and y. Its mean value is a little bit longer than the correlation time. We will deepen our understanding on the coupling phenomenon in this week's homework. Using a seminal idea by Prop and Winson in 1996, you will be even able to generate using this Markov chain it but algorithm, Boltzmann configuration, which are perfectly independent, like the pebbles thrown by the children on the Monte Carlo beach. Before going on, please download, run, and modify the program HitBath using randommap.py that we discussed in this section. Curiously, it is a few lines shorter than the program HitBathEasing.py and its graphics version allows you to follow two simulations at a time, and you can observe the half order and the coupling phenomenon. So, in conclusion, we have discussed in this tutorial the heat path algorithm for the easy model. At first sight, it was just another local Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm. But then we noticed that beyond our expectations, it respected a curious half order principle. And this allowed us to make contact with coupling. Coupling really is the concept that unites the two worlds of Monte Carlo the children's world of direct sampling and the adult's world of Markov chain Monte Carlo, as it outputs configurations that have zero correlation with the initial state. Unfortunately, it is impossible to use coupling in a general context. Coming up with new coupling algorithm is the coolest trend in Monte Carlo just as it is to devise a new slick and shiny cluster algorithm as the one we discussed in the lecture. In this week's homework, you will be brought into contact with both of these concepts and we wish you a lot of fun with homework session 8 of Statistical Mechanics, Algorithms and Computations. So, see you next week for a discussion of faster-than-the-clock algorithms in the easing model.